After my last video covering Gundam, I thought it would be a while before I'd come back and make another one, but recently the Witch from Mercury staff released their own art book, with people making a super long queue just to get a copy. It made me think a bit about Soletta and Miurine's relationship, how it's perceived and the discussion around it. Spoiler warning for Mobile Suit Gundam The Witch from Mercury. I highly recommend you watch it if you haven't, as we'll be covering the ending to some extent in this video. Now that that's out of the way, let's examine the relationship between these two and the criticism or wish people had that they never kissed at the end of the series. Firstly, I think it's more than understandable that you'd want to see them kiss. It's a big show of love and affection, and without a doubt, these two characters have a romantic connection, and Bandai execs can say it's up for interpretation all they want, since we'll be bringing up receipts throughout this video. The biggest happen at the very end of the final episode with the pair's wedding rings, since they sure as hell aren't friendship ones. Eri also refers to Miurine as her sister-in-law, so Soleta being Eri's sister means that she's married to Miurine. Simple stuff. I don't mean to brag, but all that Professor Layton detective work is really coming in handy. There's also the whole dueling system where the holder gets to be Miurine's groom, Soleta being her groom for the majority of the series, and while originally this is a device to get the plot moving, I think it's fairly clear that it's also a setup for the two's relationship. They were always meant to be bride and groom, or bride and bride, whatever takes your fancy. And honestly, these few examples are all you need, but there's more throughout the series. Subtler, more emotional examples that show the growth of their feelings and relationship together. Tomatoes are used throughout the series to say various things. One example is in episode 9 when Miurine prunes an underwrecked tomato that symbolises her relationship with Shadik. They also crop up in other Gundam series too, notably the very first one. I've always seen it as a symbol of humanity and continued growth within the series. It's a natural and familiar plant that's still being grown in this advanced space age. Tomatoes can also represent a number of other things like fertility, fitting in with the idea of growth I presented just now, as well as symbolizing love. Supposedly, in some European countries, tomatoes were sometimes referred to as love apples. In French, they'd be called pomme d'amour, stemming from an old rumored aphrodisiac effect of their seeds. Whether this has much substance or not, I still find it cute, and possibly a nod to the love Miurine and Soleta share, just like how Miurine in the first episode shares her tomatoes with a very hungry Soleta. And even if we ignored the whole love symbolism with the tomato, these tomatoes are still really special. Mia Rene took the time to grow them, and they're very personal, as they tie her to her deceased mother. Sharing them with a stranger like Soleta I think is a bit odd, unless Mia Rene's already taken a liking to her. Over time, the two would get closer throughout Season 1, but I think Episode 7 during the incubation party is where things really start to get more concrete. We see Miurene protecting Soleta during this episode when the Ariel being a Gundam is brought up in public, and Soleta is put in a very difficult position. In order to help her, she not only gives up her pride in ditching her heels and running straight through a party full of distinguished people, but also confronts and gives in to her father, someone at this point she despises is, especially the idea of getting help from him. Furthermore, she gives up her immediate dream of escaping to Earth and takes a page from Saleta's book, moving forward and gaining two by becoming the CEO of a new company, one which will require a lot of work and her time to run. The company will go on to serve many purposes throughout the story, but at this point I think she's mostly doing all this to help Saleta, and this isn't something you'd do for your average friend. In episode 10, Elan 5 confronts Soleta asking for a date. Soleta brings up Miurine as she's her groom now, and this prompts Ellen to say that she's only being used as a shield by Miurine and their relationship is a lie and everyone gossips about it, prompting Soleta to hastily run away. Clearly, in her mind, she thinks or at least wants her relationship with Miurene to be special, to be romantic. 
In the following scene, we see Mirene focused on her work and absentmindedly talks to Saletta, believing she's being nice by getting other people to help her with her greenhouse, so Saletta has less to worry about. But in Saletta's eyes though, this is Mirene not caring about her and not wanting to give her responsibilities. She overthinks her, saying, I've been getting wrong ideas all on my own, believing the bond between them is one-sided and all in her head. It's a classic case of not communicating properly with a loved one, something you're likely to experience in a budding romantic relationship. So it's not like she's in a bad mood or anything, she was just focused on her work previously. She's also not as emotionally present, which is in contrast to Saletta who is very emotional after Elon 5 accosted her minutes before this, leading to Saletta overthinking even more and becoming a bit heartbroken at the thought that Mirene doesn't care about her as much as she thought she did. This leads into perhaps my favourite scene of the entire show in episode 11, after Saletta has a talk with her mum about her worries in the little toilet, Mirene appears and the two have a little chase and we get one of the best conversations in the show. I cover it in my video on Connection and Gundam, so I won't go through it beat by beat here, but they have another conversation couples are likely to have on connection and relying on each other. It's also cute how Mirene breaks down and goes through the things she wants from Saletta, like her emailing her three times a day, which is something you wouldn't say to just a normal friend. I don't tell my friends that I want emails from them three times a day. I might tell that to someone I really love though. Moving on to episode 17, it features a talk between Saletta and Ghoul after he comes back to Astikasia. Ghoul declares that Suleta is precious to him. It's a really cute and heartfelt moment, but Suleta's response is equally heartfelt, turning him down by saying she already has someone precious to her now. And I feel like the focus on her hands, how they go from this excitement of Ghoul's confession to a more relaxed stance as she thinks about Mirene, is really nice and a subtle cue of her feelings. Later on in this episode, we would get the duel with Ghoul, which is also telling of how Saletta feels towards Mirene, as after her loss, she really breaks down, and you can hear it so clearly in Kana Ichinose's performance in the Japanese version. <laughs> It's heartbreaking to hear Saletta lose someone who she really loves, and it only stings even more when Mirene calls her her Mercurian country bumpkin, which is the cutest pet name ever, and it just makes this scene hurt even more, knowing that Mirene loves her equally. She's just going about helping Saletta in the worst way possible at this point, but this is anime drama for you. In episode 22, there's another subtle hand-based moment, with the scene where the two reunite, with Mio finally showing her vulnerable side to Saletta, Saletta opening the door and extending her hand to Mirene. And Mirene could have just grabbed her hand normally, but instead we get a very deliberate long shot of their fingers lovingly curling around each other. Finally, I want to bring up a scene in the last episode where after the battle as Saletta drifts through space, we get a mirrored scene to the first episode where Mirene comes to Saletta's rescue instead of Saletta rescuing Mirene. The two of them together just end up drifting through space. This reminds me of a scene in the movie Gundam F91 with Seabook and Cecily as they similarly float together in space after a climactic battle. In space, you wear space helmets and you can't expose your head or even kiss. And when this moment happened in G-Witch, I saw some people discuss this and they said that floating together in space is basically the Gundam equivalent of a kiss. And I think I agree. At the very least, it's a fun way to include something romantic that's relevant to Gundam specifically. Without a doubt, I think the creators who did write the scene thought of this connection with F91 and perhaps other similar scenes throughout Gundam, and included it as a way of showing us another romantic scene between Saletta and Mirene, while also paying tribute to the legacy of Gundam. 
And it's not just these moments I've mentioned throughout the video, there's countless conversations and scenes that feature them together in a more intimate way, like in episode 4 when they presumably share me Rene's room and possibly bed together or the end of episode 8 where they're riding on a bike together at night and Mirine leans her head against Saleta's back and smiles. There's also episode 17 where Saleta alludes to them getting married when Mio becomes 17 and she seems awfully excited about this prospect. I could also look at the music for Witch from Mercury, like the ending insert song by Aina of the End, Hoseki no Hibi, and how it could be sung from Miorine's perspective, alluding to her state of mind during the conclusion of the series through the lyrics, like her heart and will thawing after meeting Saleta, and her days now being like precious gems, which is just lyrically beautiful. Red Birthmark, also by Aina of the End, is not only an excellent song, but watch the actual music video for it and tell me it's not gay at all. The Witch from Mercury ending version is also amazing and I think incredibly romantic, with the two of them twirling around together and ultimately holding hands, again in a very romantic way as they really grip and lean into each other. I've watched this ending so many times and every time I just find it super beautiful. Overall, there's an outpouring of love throughout the series that I think is undeniable. It goes beyond what I've mentioned here and there's so many subtle exchanges in body and hand language, glances and just dialogue which alludes to their growing romantic connection to each other. I have no idea how hard it might have been for the team behind The Witch from Mercury to get away with all of this, but based on the weird response we got from Bandai about their relationship being up to our interpretation, they might have had to be subtle in how they depicted romantic elements to get it into the show. Recently, we also got another statement furthering the it's just your interpretation agenda by the character animation director Sutomo Ono, which while worded nicer, still ignores a lot of the issues behind this whole line of thought. Mainly, everything I've illustrated in this video, it's so clear that Saleta and Mirine are romantically involved and get married at the end. Using the term irreplaceable partners instead of saying that they're married is ignoring the show's focus on the whole bride and groom plotline, as well as backpedaling on something really significant. This isn't the fans projecting, it's not just our imaginations or our interpretation, it's clearly laid out in the show and also less clearly referenced and bolstered throughout it too. Saleta and Mirine are both women who get married and find partnership in each other and that's great. Two people should be able to love and marry each other no matter who they are and we should support that. Making same-sex marriage more normal and accepted would make the world and all our lives better. I don't see this as something political in the slightest, it's just something human. And we may have not gotten a kiss or a wedding scene, but I think by working around these obvious examples of depicting love, we got something more beautiful and nuanced between Saleta and Mirine. A really honest betrayal of two women's budding relationship that isn't fetishized or made light of by tropes. Something really special, and I'm so glad they got their happy ending, since a lot of Gundam protagonists don't get one. But I'll spare you the details on them, and for now let's just enjoy this happy ending for once and hope more anime and more Gundam are made like this in the future. Thank you for watching this video, I really wanted to talk about Saleta and Mirene one more time, to really give this topic some thought and put my voice out there in the world, because I'd like to see more media like this and for Gundam to keep evolving and pushing its boundaries. If you like this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. I mostly make content surrounding Weekly Shonen Jump, but I'd love to make more Gundam videos in the future. Hopefully I'll see you then, but for now, be kind to each other and take care.